None of you will break me! Wrong! What is this? Pity? Rebellion? Blasphemy? Stand down, or we will put you down! I think not. You're dead. Impro Tippy. Expected to be greeted as a hero, but the wretches imprisoned me and tried to tear my mind apart. I didn't think anyone would come for me. Erasing my thoughts and my will, even I could not have endured for much longer. Agreed. Lead the way. Minthara is supposed to be in a cell. You have some explaining to do. You avoided a fight this time, but bullying your way out of Moonrise is a risky proposition. Their death is merely delayed. We will return and kill them all. I last left Moonrise as a commander in the Absolute's army, obeying the voice of a god. I thought I had found a home and a purpose. Now I leave as an exile. But you risked your life to rescue me. For that, I am grateful. The artifact connects with her, pulling your minds together and showing her all that you have seen. The prism, your dream visitor, the protection that keeps you from obeying the absolute and becoming a lithid. She knows it all in a moment. Her mind reels, but is no longer clouded. She accepts the truth. She has no choice. There is much we must discuss. Do you have a safe place to camp nearby? Goodbye for now. I will see you soon. It does not compare with the comforts of home, but your camp is almost palatial in comparison to my previous accommodation. Thank you for allowing me to come here and for bringing me back to myself. Each memory that returns to me is more disturbing than the last. The things that I did in the name of the Absolute. The things that were done to me. They broke my mind. Precisely. While our tadpoles live, and the cult have the means to control them, we will never be safe. We must eradicate them, starting with General Thorm. I mean, Ketherick. My deference to him is a habit that will die hard, I fear.
Not only this battle, but all that come after. Swear that you will keep me close. Until the Absolute is dead, at least. If I leave your side, the prison will no longer protect me, and I will cease to be Minthara. The Absolute will make me its puppet again. I would rather die. Thank you. I knew you were different to other true souls when we met, but I could see nothing clearly. Now, thanks to the prism, the Absolute does not cloud my thoughts at all. I see that together. We can have our vengeance on those who infected us. Rest well, and keep your wits about you. Tomorrow, we go to war with the Cult of the Absolute. Excellent. Let us teach the Cult to fear us. The drow is unpredictable, uncompromising. I respect her almost as much as I distrust her. I have encountered few Githyanki in my life. Those that I did were raiders. They croaked out pleas for mercy in their alien tongue as they died. Meeting Lazel makes me wish I knew more of their culture. To one who only sees the surface of things, perhaps. You should look deeper. There is a fanaticism in the Lolth Swarm that lends itself to chaos. They turn their blades on one another as readily as on outsiders. The Gith have stricter hierarchies and stronger commitment to a single cause. Even now, infected and far from home, Lazel stays true to the cause. That shows resolve. I, I want to be clear. Letting Minthara tag along with us was your idea. So if you wake up with a dagger to your throat, that's on you. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry for looking out for our collective hides. But fine. Take her if you wish. Just know I'll be resting with one eye open. He's been deprived of freedom and strong blood for so long that he is addicted to both. While those addictions have their hold on him, he is still a slave. <laughs> no. He is well aware that I would exsanguinate him entirely if he flashed his fangs at me. <sighs> Free. What purpose does he have that does not involve his master? He fears him, he hates him, he dreams of him, and he will either kill him or die trying. Astarian is no more free of Kazador then you or I are free of our tadpoles. He will only be free when Kazador is dead. And that is as it should be. When the time comes, we must hope that he does not only take Kazador's long life, but the power that has sustained him as well. Minthara is something of a closed book, but I suspect a heart of gold lurks beneath that stern countenance. Once she gets to know me, I'm sure she'll open up. She's just waiting for someone ready to listen. The wizard? No. It is pointless. In my experience, the moment they leave their libraries, wizards have the life expectancy of a gnome in a war. Either the enemy recognizes they are a threat and kills them swiftly, or their curiosity leads them to combust while experimenting with the limits of magic. Our wizard is already in a state of suspended combustion, thanks to that orb between his ribs. <laughs> I suspect it is only a matter of time before he goes up in smoke. 
I will reserve my social graces for those who might live long enough to appreciate them. It doesn't seem long ago that Mintharu would have sought to kill us, and now we've welcomed her along. We're nothing if not magnanimous. It would have been better for us had she embraced Shah and claimed the power of the goddess. But it is better for Shadowheart to be free of that poisonous influence. The Night Singer has some admirable qualities, far more than her insipid sister, but her followers are repressed. Take the child Shadowheart. She does not even know who she is, but still manages to pity herself. The very concept of Sharon worship is self-indulgent. They would have you think every whispered word and hidden thought is of value, but it is not so. I have performed a thousand interrogations, squeezing out the most guarded secrets held in heart, mind, and soul. I can tell you this. When the trivial parts have been whittled away and I have sifted through what remains, in most cases, a person amounts to nothing at all. He is exceedingly self-righteous. <laughs> Amusing, considering he bound himself to a devil. I will take your word for it. I only care that he is a good soldier, and he has not disappointed me on that front. <laughs> I would rather be allied with a warlock than the spoiled son of a noble who has more experience with diplomats than devils. I have never known anyone so ferocious and unassailable in battle, and yet so fragile and impermanent in their very being. I often think of mortality as a curse. In time, all that I am and all that I have known and learned will be lost. In time, our cities will be dust. Kalak does not seem to have such anxieties. Perhaps because she cannot afford to. She exists in the moment, and she will burn out and be gone in a moment. <sighs> there is something very beautiful about that. <laughs> 